All right, welcome back to Morning Express. And uh, the headline that you see there was uh, a government pledge to crush corruption. Now, that particular headline was for the Daily Nation. And I'll give you the date. It was Saturday, January the 20th, 1968. Government pledge to crush corruption. So this seems to have been something that uh, the government has tried since 1968 and still has not managed. So how are we going to read corruption out of this country? Let me also just take a look at the Twitter poll question that we're running today. And we're asking the question, is politics undermining the fight against corruption? Some of your comments coming through, uh, politics, no, it's politicians who are corrupt. Uh, part of cartels robbing this nation without fear. We have Jeremiah Hagen who says Kenyan politics uh, is intertwined with corruption. Mega corruption, tribalism is at the top layer. So, um, just in case you're joining us now, a quick reintroduction of the panel that we have here this morning. I have Michael Aguanda, I have Ambrose Weda, and Honorable Irungo Kangata. Basically, just to uh, look at um, the topic of today, and we're looking at corruption. Let me start with you, um, Michael Aguanda. Where does the back stop? We can see a headline here dating back to 1968 and the government. And sometimes I think we hide in that word government in that it's just an amorph. I mean, nobody can say this is government. You have so many uh, players in it. But where does the back stop? We really have to get to a point where, as Kenya, we go the way of uh, maybe uh, Singapore, for example, where corruption uh, is it cannot be tolerated at all. Um, Mike, uh, the back stops with the president, and I will not mince my words on that. Uh, it is sad in this country, and I can't imagine uh, being a president of a country where every single week billions are lost within my watch. But the president is on record saying there's not much he can do based on, well, his argument, I guess, is based on the Constitution 2010. Regardless, regardless, he's still the president who was elected by the people, and he was given the mandate to be the CEO of a country, of Kenya. And for that reason, there are a few things. When I look at all this uh, fiasco over uh, looting and grabbing and stealing money from public coffer and even private Koffer. Sometimes I wonder, I know the government, the president has come out very clearly to bash this act. He said he's not going to tolerate it. But every now and again, he says that, but we see the same act. And I've kind of been asking myself three questions. One, and I'll give an answer to it, is one, is we could be having a president who is really, really saved. And he's so saved that he does not want to judge, as the good book says. But I want to remind him that even Jesus Christ himself went to his father's house and when he found people trading, he decided to create a to serious scene out of it and scared people out of his father's house. And, 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 and people did not do it because he was not happy. At one point, you got to act crazy so that the country can see that something is happening. Not to have a lease sneaked into the parliament with names of looters, and then soon after that, nothing happens to them. And... Um, Number two is but then, perhaps... Then are, are you advocating that he acts uh, contrary to the law? Because the reason why those who were acquitted were acquitted is because legally there was not, the case you know, could not see light of day. We have DCI that the president has appointed by himself. He has authority to investigate these matters and follow them through because it is his officers are doing them. And you, I want to finish my chain of thought here. And, and number two is I was wondering whether also the president is, is held at ransom with these cartels, uh, even at one point him saying that even in my own house here, the house in the hill, there seem to be some corruption here. And the question is, will he borrow from a President Kagame who had his own friends to Taken to jail. In fact, at one point he went and even visited them in jail, but the story was told out there that indeed this is not a man that wants to tolerate corruption. People argue that perhaps the president is powerless to prosecute and, and, and to even ask an individual that has been corruptly involved, I mean, that has been involved in corruption to be taken to court and jail because of the judiciary and people blame the judiciary for that reason. But I can tell you that it is exactly what uh, Advocate Reda was talking about. If you take a faulty case to court, 
it will disappear. It is dead on arrival. And it is these people that the government has employed, and the government has amorphous as it is. It has every instrument to get every detail in this country. Are they not just doing their job for the sake of, 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 of their personal interests? And okay, allow me to bring in Senator here. Senator, where does the back stop? Is the president helpless? Can he crack the whip to a point where we see action being taken once and for all? To me, uh, the reasons can be attributed to a variety of reasons. It's not one reason. You cannot say the problem is the president. No way. Uh, to me, there are several reasons which are making this problem to persist. Number one, of course, we need to appreciate our constitution is quite defective. Well, we know the reason why it was structured that way. The idea was to whittle down uh, the overzealous presidency so that you don't have powers reposing in one seat. We wanted to disperse. But uh, upon <coughs> doing that, we did, to a certain extent, uh, fetter the presidency. Notwithstanding, uh, people elect the president to achieve certain results. So that, strictly speaking, for instance, uh, the president does not have power to direct the DPP to do certain matters. He does not have the power to direct the chief justice to do certain matters. All those are what we call independent constitutional bodies. Uh, compare that constitution probably with the Rwandan case. No wonder uh, comparing Kenya with Rwanda from where I sit is wrong because you are comparing an orange with an apple. Uh, so to a certain extent, uh, we may reconsider whether we may even want to become like the continental Europe where courts have investigative powers. You have what we call pre-trials, where magistrates uh, scrutinize uh, the evidence, uh, and upon seeing there is a prima facie case that can be prosecuted, then allows the matter to go for trial. Probably we may reconsider whether we can adopt that system so that you don't have a situation where uh, the judiciary is saying, no, the case that was brought before me was completely defective. But if you are involved a in issue from the beginning, you may therefore not to run away under that. As to also, to a certain extent also, uh, we may also consider we have more stronger institutions. Some of the people who are in these institutions, uh, sorry to say, they have not been quite bold in uh, confronting uh, these networks because these are quite extent uh, networks which have major tentacles across the society. Mm. Yes. All right, Weda. <coughs> I think the, the bug stops with the president. The bug stops with the people of Kenya. Us, we are not angry. <laughs> we see this and laugh and say, where is the money? That is why we are not seeing the, the constitutional difficulties. When we get angry, we will demand of members of parliament, like my brother here, that there should be some serious penalties. Serious penalties. We treat robbery with violence more serious than this kind of robbery that will hit us for the next 30, 40 years. That seriousness is when we will look and tell the president, what do you need? Which power do you need to deal with corruption? As we talk now, speaking as a lawyer, and a good one, the president has very little legal attitude. Very little. He cannot direct the judiciary. He has very little role on the DPP, even the police. So he, ha he can only see reports from the, 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 the NY, N, 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 NSIS showing that Mr. Weda has leaked sugar. But when we go to court, the court will be saying, where's the evidence? Mm. There's nothing. There's nothing. And, I, and I'll go there and get a constitutional So, so, so in, your, in, your, in your suggestion, yes. what then is uh, the Kenyan people or, or the Kenyan the people The Kenyan people do? should be so angry that the demand of their legislature that we change the approach. Tremendous change in approach. We need penalties. We need to change the way we deal with corruption. Mm -hmm. how, how, how do we need to change it? The way the ones we keep on Singapore, wherever, how do they deal with it? It is so serious that when you are named in corruption, you are not elected, you are taken to jail. Here in Kenya, if I am, uh, it was to be written, whether it's Uru's two billion, my friends will be calling me, do you have the money? <laughs> and I will be running for a seat, and I will be winning, and I will be sponsoring <laughs> candidates. We have to change internally, mm. then we will change. All right, this so theft is, is, is deep in us, and the president, you can see his anger, but he's 
very little to do. All right, Sen Senator, um, you're a legislator, and from the reports that we've seen, there are a number of legislators who may be involved, uh, high offices. What do you think really stops us from having them brought to book? Are, well, are, are uh, you, as, as leaders, uh, hiding each other? Are you covering each other's backs? I mean, um, do we have a leader who can stand up and say, my brother here has stolen, and I, you know, uh, would literally not sit with him in the same Senate as long as I know his name is you know, <coughs> in, 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 indicated? Yes, by the way, first and foremost, let me say, so far I have not seen any parliamentarian who has been mentioned in these cadres. So, uh, so therefore, I think your statement is quite erroneous. The NCBD? <laughs> the, no, it is NCBD. true. NCBD? No, no, they, they're and, already no, which talking ones? about... Uh, which one? No, they, already one. Say, they don't want to mention them, but they're already no. saying about six uh. legis legislators are involved in it. No, we are talking of the names which are in public question realm. of defamation. No, we are talking... That's why no, no, we are talking of the people in public realm. These are public servants. But, but Honorable Irongo, uh, are, are, you telling me, are you telling me that uh, you're 100% sure that no um, legislators have, you know, names are there and you're not aware of any? So far, none. So far. Of course, they may emerge. And I can tell you, if they emerge, parliamentarians are going to take action. We are going to expose them. I know of several instances where parliamentarians have exposed their fellow members of parliament. We have even reports against some of our colleagues. Michael Aguanda, yes. do you believe? Uh, no, I, can I, I finish? <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, want can, to. can I finish? I want to. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, I can tell you as a matter of fact, eh, uh, when you compare a parliamentarian and a public servant between the two, who steals more? Parliamentarians are very little <laughs> latitude of stealing. Because one, we don't but, control but funds. Still uh, steal. No, we don't even uh, control funds. For it's surely, like now me as a senator, at what point will I steal? I, I, I don't control any fund. My work is just to oversight. So the real culprits are the public servants of this, of the, of this country who are not one elected meaning they don't even have any legitimacy. You see, unlike us, who are always going to machine and using our own resources uh, to assist the society, rarely will you find these people who are stealing, uh, going back home. Be that as it may, I would like to comment on, it, on, on this issue. We need to sit down as a society and look uh, how we have evolved in terms of criminal justice system. It has continuously been tilted in favor of the accused person. Number one, uh, there was a judgment that was rendered, I think, in the year 2009, which compelled the state to be giving witness statements to the accused person. So, uh, so therefore, which is positive, there are positive attributes to that. But also that then means uh, somehow the, 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 the accused person got some more powers vis-a-vis -vis the state. That's number one. Number two, you are aware now the courts have interpreted the constitution to mean every accused person has the right to bail, notwithstanding the nature of the offense that person is facing. As a result, we have potential murderers, potential grand uh, corrupt people who are now having a field day. You go to court, you get bond, you now start interfering with witnesses, you start interfering with evidence, and you, it is easy to manipulate your case when you are outside there. So how do you solve that? One, we may need to retweak the Constitution. There is now a debate as to whether we shall have a review of the Constitution. But uh, when you look at the suggestion, none appears to lie in this area. It is about whether we have a prime ministerial position or not. But but from where I sit, we may need to look at the Bill of Rights. We see how we have whittled down the powers of the state vis-a-vis -vis its capability to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. And also, most importantly, from where I sit, uh, we may need to reconsider uh, whether to ensure people who are convicted with grand corruption are punishable through what we call capital offense. Personally, I brought an amendment. I recall very well when I was a member of parliament for Kearu, I proposed to make anyone stealing one billion and above to face the hangman noose. That proposal was rejected. Uh, some people argued it is unconstitutional, which is, it is not, because when you look at that article on, 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 on the right to life, mm. it is not an absolute right. It, it, the, the constitution envisages a situation where through law you can uh, you can uh, vitiate the right to life. So therefore, 
from where I sit as a country, uh, as we discuss other areas, we may need to, to look discuss at the Bill that. of Rights All right. and see how it can assist uh, Michael us. Michael Agwanda, do you conflict. believe the good legislator that won, if members of parliament or legislators were on that list, they would disown them or uh, basically uh, be uh, the ones to champion and say that, no, my fellow member of parliament, you need to go to jail? I think, first of all, we need to accept that uh, Honorable Rungu is out of order by saying uh, you know, that no member of parliament has been mentioned or in the Senate. It is in the public um, um, domain that uh, we have politicians and members of parliament and senators who are now suppliers in the government and even NCPD, uh, um, National Cereal and Produce Board, some of them are involved. If their names have not been mentioned here, it doesn't mean that they're not involved. They are involved. In fact, the farmers knows them by name and even their aides. And today, they're having a big meeting where they'll be mentioning them. It is also clear that Park and Peak previously mentioned so many of some of these members of parliament that are involved in shady deals and nothing happened. If uh, I mean, I would, I would love, love to hear uh, Honorable Irungu telling us where all these documents and reports that have been prepared by Peck and Park recommending prosecution even to the people within parliament are today. Because all they do, and you see, you've seen Park calling so many people, all they do is write a report and somehow, just like what I've said, uh, somebody will make sure that that report does not end up at the DPP's office or it is not investigated. And then the case is lost. We have the biggest problem in this country that we have not observed the chapter six of this constitution. And that is of integrity. That is why a man loots a lot of money, he goes on the ground and dishes it out there, and then after doing that, he's elected as an MP and as a governor and is elected as, as, as a senator. He cannot oversight the government when everybody knows that you just told the other day, gave it to people, and now you've been elected. That is why parliament and the Senate is losing the salt that they have. They cannot uh, oversight what the government is doing or the, the executive with a clean hand because they're culprits. Some of them literally bought their way to be members of parliament. Some of them paid their way through IBC to be members of parliament. So, so then Until would, 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 would the electorate be to blame? Because some of these people are, let's say they're known to be people who possibly got their wealth in dishonest ways. But... The, we are partakers of that wealth. The electorate might not be blamed per se. They, they do not uh, you know, have the powers to arrest a guy who just stole the money. They do but not they have, have the power, power to receive that to, money. They have the power well, to receive can, the can, money. Can, but I can, can tell I you like a small story yeah. Yeah, to, to contextualize this. Eh? Uh, page two of the standard says, a lawmaker set tongues wagging in his constituency for being mean. The MP who is doing his second seat in parliament does not give more than 5,000 when the people he represents ask for financial assistance. But what shocked voters the fact that over the weekend he sent 3,000 to distant relatives who are raising funds for a burial. The residents are now wondering whether the lawmaker who lives lives that are going hard financial times or is just tight fisted. What does that tell you? What does it tell I agree. <laughs> I agree that it tells us that the, the community demands, the people demands resources from this MP. But I am saying if, it, if this intense scrutiny starts from the time somebody develops an interest to become an MP or a governor or a senator, and that <coughs> if he bribes, by the way, it's against the law even to buy your voters, that he will be prosecuted and will not be allowed to run for that office. Nobody will do it. And, but and because anyway, and, nobody and, supervises and, this and nobody and, and, takes and, and, it seriously. And anyway, if he was to observe happens. Chapter 6 of the Constitution, he should not allow people to... He is there to, as, a, as a legislator, not as a conduit for money. So really, even and if people demand of him to give money, he should not give that money. But let He's me hear from Wenda. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you what I said, that we as Kenyans, we see this, but we are not angry. We are still smiling, hoping that next round it will be me, the two billion. The day we are angry, the day we are angry, we will not elect these people. We are the ones who elect them. We elect jailbirds. When you are bad from running under chapter six, we come out and say our, our community is being finished and so on and so forth. We see instant coffee millionaires. There's no way today, tomorrow you see Weda has his own choppers. And my people say, this is the guy. They can't even say, but Weda has been just practicing here in Nairobi. Mm. Is it that within this short period he was at the sugar company, the sugar company is down, now him, his helicopters are up. What is not adding up? When you are looking at corruption, 
you first of all look at the mouth. You will see if there's some sugar. If it is white, you taste the lips. <laughs> if you taste the lips and there's still no tasting, you look inside. When you, you look inside, whenever you want to see the diseases that kill us from what we have eaten, normally doctors look inside. If you can't access inside, you look at the excretions. What you pee out, that can also tell what you have eaten. Mm. What I give out can tell what I've eaten in. These thieves, we know them, we mm. see them, and we can tell. But because we are not angry, we celebrate them. We elect them, we cheer them, we fear them. We tell our children to be like them. Let the people of Kenya be so angry that the day I'm a cabinet minister, after three years, they see my wealth. They should be able to say, let him tell us. We must have a law that says, uh, a law like Life Audit Act. But we have the wealth declaration. No, 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 uh, the wealth declaration is, is just a is form not... which you fill. Mm. You fill it at will. We have an act called Life Audit Act. When you are getting into an office, you are audited. When you are leaving an office, audited. you are audited. And then there are people to say, we know that weather has 10 flats in Mombasa, another one, another one. Our economy is so small that we can stop people from hiding money. America is so big, yet you cannot hide stolen money. Mm -hmm. They can easily see it. We must move there. We must make <clears throat> it difficult for people to hide stolen money. So that right. when you are given money, you refuse to receive it. You see, it's like small children. Small school children cannot handle, let's say, 10,000. So they can't even steal it because they can't handle it. The moment they pick it, the school knows, the neighbors know. But as we have left it for my brother here to take a billion, hide it in this economy, and then he is uh, sung for. He's celebrated. Irungu Kangata, we need to wind up. We need to talk solutions. What do you say is the best way forward for this uh, issue of corruption to be dealt with once and for all? One, we need to arrest people, we need to prosecute them, and we need to jail people. That way we are going to deter corruption. I think uh, number two, the president, true, we need to agree that uh, there are legal bottlenecks, but there's a way still he can maneuver and uh, hasten this process mm -hmm. of fighting corruption. Number one, he needs to, whenever he comes to parliament, to present his annual report on the state of the nation. Probably he needs to tell us the people he suspects are aiding these corrupt people. Whether it is judiciary, he can even name the judges who he thinks, according to the report he's getting, mm -hmm. uh, they, are, they, they are assisting these cartels to evade the justice. Whether it is uh, some other politicians, they need to be exposed. As to the issue concerning politicians being corrupt, I think that's an issue that we need to think as a society, how we can configure campaign financing laws in a more proper and cogent manner. I say that because we need to appreciate Kenya, in Kenya, politics is quite expensive, that there is always a, a cost in being a leader, in campaigning to capture power, in, 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 in your endeavor to retain power. And, and therefore, uh, surely, in such kind of a context or a, a situation, uh, it's unfair for poor people, by the way, to become leaders. They have to, to think, how do you become a leader? You have no money. So therefore, we need to think, how do we come up with proper campaign financing laws mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that are going to ensure the cost of being a leader is not quite expensive? Because I know quite a number of leaders are quite motivated to become corrupt so that they get that money and they take that money. Or maybe it's the other way around, where if you are poor, you become a politician, you know there's money. There's a gravy train that's there, so it becomes a motivation. Michael Agwanda, your cl closing comments and possibly way forward, what needs to be done? The president needs to be crazy and make sure that even if you are his friend and you've been involved in corruption, you are going home and not only going home, your property is seized, you are named and shamed. So that the By crazy, entire... you mean heavy-handed? Heavy-handed, I, I want to say so, mm -hmm. because if we don't but get But won't you be the same people who are going to accuse him of now again becoming a dictator? I don't care whether he becomes a dictator if that will stop the corruption in this country. Because the corruption in this country is not stopping with President Uru Kenyatta. If he doesn't stop it today, our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren are going to suffer, and this country will not see the light of the day. That's my biggest fear. And secondly, I really, really feel that the 
biggest group of people who are perpetuating this corruption are senior government officers. They are people that have never come out in public and said, there's corruption in my ministry. In fact, it is always a leakage. My biggest worry is Honorable Raila today is with the government. I don't know whether he will also take the role again that has been having for all these years of unearthing the ills that are happening in the government. But again, I want to ask the president himself, why appoint people, reappoint people that you are why in your previous government, like Ministry of Health, devolution, in key position in your second term, while we know very well that some of those people officiated the corruptions that were in this ministry. Really, if somebody was in charge of a ministry like health that was involved in corruption, why must you move him to another place or take him to a foreign mission so that he can continue stealing because he was there and he was not able to stamp it out? Get people that are fresh, that are able to help you fight corruption. Otherwise, this is just a vicious circle. We'll be seeing it on the news but if even his own money can be stolen like two billion for planting trees perhaps the president now need to consider reconsider giving government money and start working with the NGOs so that these NGOs can be able to implement some of these things instead of giving it to thieves that he knows will run away with them and then they run to court and they've they stolen a billion. They know even if they work for 200 years, they will never earn that 100 billion. They can pay everybody right. and still live comfortably. Uh, Something must be done. Bruce, where and Bruce, your closing now. comments? Very I, think, I think we must continue in dealing with this. This time we need to see some banks close down. This money is passed through banks. You want to see some CEOs of some banks charged and their managers so that it is more difficult to receive corruption money. Let's tighten the bottom so that even if you have the hunger to steal, but it becomes difficult. All of us would like to sell drugs and make millions, but the fear of the consequences is restraining us. We want to see the, 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 the DPP ensure that these banks that stole our, our money is passed through, let their CEUs mm. go down. We also want to see some of those banks close down. We want to see blood flowing and we join the president in this. We will be heading somewhere. It is a fight we will never lose. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We'll have to wind it up right there because of time. Michael Agwanda, who's a political analyst and a consultant. We also have Imbro Sweda, who's an advocate. Uh, Honorable Irungo Kangata, who's a senator from Moranga. Thank you for joining us this morning. And that's the way it is. And, uh, well, we now have to go in to take a break. Uh, but do stay with us right here on Morning Express. We've still got more stories that are making headlines. And later on, we'll also be looking at Sports Chat. And today, we'd like to give you uh, ideas on how you can basically circumvent or do away with traffic, but also still keeping yourself healthy. That's all coming up right here. But for now, we take a short break. This is Morning Express.